and they'll tell you about how climatic change can come about in consequence of environmental pollution. One more statement about Dajjal, and we're ready to start. He said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, that the last people to come out to Dajjal, the false messiah, the antichrist, would be women. And a man would have to return to his home and tie down his wife and sister and daughter to protect and preserve them from the job. Meaning, they're going to be so brainwashed. There's going to be something like a hypnotic spell upon them that you cannot penetrate. The women of the world will be swept off their feet by a new philosophy pertaining to women. A new philosophy of feminism. And the struggle for women's liberation. This is the age of the Dajjal and the final stage of the age of the Dajjal. With those preliminary observations, let us now begin our subject. The story that I have to tell you. The Prophet Wasallam has just completed the Hajj, the first and the last Hajj he ever completed, he ever performed. He gives the sermon or the khutbah, khutbah al wida And then revelation comes down which all of every Muslim knows, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announces, Al-Yawm, Akmaltu lakum deenakum. I've completed my job. I've completed my job. The religion is now perfected. So we, we thought that this was the end, hmm? when this revelation came down. But no. The Prophet ﷺ now returns to Medina. There are about 81 days left in his blessed life. And then two things happen which are extraordinary. The first is that one more revelation of the Quran comes down on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and recorded in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari He said, the last revelation to come down was the revelation on riba in Surah Al-Baqarah, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared war for the liberation of the oppressed from the economic oppression of riba. For illam tafa'alu, if you do not give it up, then take notice of a declaration of war from Allah and His Messenger. Why should Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send down one more revelation? After having said, This day I have perfected for you your deed, I have completed my favor unto you. The answer appears to be that in this subject of riba, or usury lies one of the greatest dangers that can face the world and that can face the Ummah of Muhammad for the rest of history. Do not neglect the study of this subject. That is what it means. And that's precisely what we've done. I live in the capital city of Riba, New York City. I have been teaching the subject in New York and in the United States for the last six, seven years. And I'm still the only one, the only one in the capital city of Riba to be teaching this subject. No one else. And as I teach this subject, I am amazed 
of how little knowledge our people have. We now turn to the second event, which is the subject of our talk tonight. It is within these 81 days, shortly before the death of the Prophet therefore, and he, the Prophet was sitting in the masjid. And all of us were sitting there with him, all the companions, when something strange happened, something mysterious happened, something dramatic happened, something unforgettable happened. A stranger entered into the masjid. He was dressed all in white, and his hair was black. No one knew him, so he could not have been from Medina. He has to be a stranger from outside. But in those days, you didn't have air conditioned Toyota Camrys. Mr. Chairman, you don't have a Camry. In those days, you didn't have air conditioned Toyota Camrys. You had to travel by horse or by camel. And when you travel through the desert, then you'll have the sand of the desert in your hair and on your clothing and in your beard. In those days, people used to grow beards. <laughs> and in your eyes and in your ears and all over. So anyone can see this is a traveler. But this stranger has, has no dust upon him. Not at all. So this is something which is baffling, baffling. He's not a resident and there is no evidence that he has traveled. Who is he? The stranger walks into the masjid and this is at a time when Islam has already conquered Arabia. And Muhammad Islam is now the head of state of the whole of Arabia. And so one would expect that there would be even more security than there was before to protect him from those who would want to harm him. But this stranger walks through, walks through the gathering and goes directly in front of the Prophet Nobody stopped him. That's strange. And then he sits down in front of the Prophet of Islam to Islam so close that his knees are touching the knees of the Prophet of Islam to Islam. That's dangerous. Because if he has come with an evil design, if he has a dagger here hidden and he were to whip it out, no one would be able to stop him. And this is therefore a grave and an inexplicable breach of security. Why is it that none of the companions moved to stop this stranger? Why were they all immobilized? Why? There is drama in this moment. It is unforgettable. And then the stranger began to question the Prophet of Islam. Question one, question two, question three, question four, question five. And he's not asking about how to cook masakan padan. No, no, no. No, no, no. He's questioning him about the deen, about religion. But this is the messenger of Allah. Who are you? Where did you get this authority from? to question him. And the Prophet ﷺ submits to the questioning. That's strange. And as he gives the answers to the questions, the stranger responds like a headmaster or principal, your answer is correct. <laughs> Who is this? At the end of the five questions and answers, he got up as suddenly as unceremoniously as he had come, and he left. 
He left. None of us would ever, ever, ever forget that day. So we asked the Prophet of Islam, who is that? Who is that? And the Prophet said to us, it astonished us. Said, that was the angel himself. That was Gabriel, Jibrail, alayhi salam. He had come as a human being, yes, before Maryam. Maryam. But no one else could see him. When he said to Maryam, you're going to have a baby boy. And she replied, how can I have a baby boy when no man has ever touched me? Hmm? But now, he has come in the form of a human being, but come in front of everybody. Everybody could see him. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do this? There must be a very important reason that he should wait until this last moment before the death of the Prophet and that he should send the angel in this awesomely dramatic way, this unforgettable way. There must be something tremendously important in these five questions and in these five answers. And since this visit came at the last stage of the life of the Prophet ﷺ, perhaps it also implies that in this, in these five questions and five answers, there is guidance for us concerning the awesome challenges of the last age, the age of Dajjal. Question one, what is Islam? Question two, what is Iman? Question three, what is Al-Ihsan? Question four, when will the last hour come? Question five, what are the signs of the last hour? Had question one been posed while we were still in Mecca before the Hijra, the answer would have been, Islam is the declaration that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, is his messenger. But the question is posed now, after revelation had come down, establishing the fast of Ramadan. 